Let's see. Do we have the the good doctor on from uh, the president of Mississippi uh, or Holmes the Community College? Good morning, uh, Doctor Jim Haffey. How are you, sir? Can you hear well, me? Good morning, Paul. I sure can. Good morning to you. Well, we got another round of this and, stuff uh, coming, but uh, Jim, I, I sure will. Look, what does it look like then now? Because I, I think you guys got the brunt of the storm, and uh, we were told just about every building on campus. Uh, on, on the Holmes campus had some damage. So where are we this morning, Jim? Well, Paul, we're in a good we're in a good place as far as the college is concerned, uh, mm-hmm. because of a lot of hard work over the weekend in the last few days. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is uh, from Patton. He says, uh, "A good plan violently executed now is better than a perfect plan next week." And sometimes <laughs> in state government, right. it can be a little frustrating when you've got you've got resources and you have a project that you want to get done, uh, but you have to go, you know, spend three months planning it and bidding it. Um, and so this, this last week was pretty refreshing to see uh, probably 75 uh, commercial trucks and bucket trucks and uh, a huge response coming into the community. Of course, all of our crews, it, it was uh, <clears throat> a little overwhelming at times, but it was a, it was a good situation yeah. that we were able to get that much uh, mobilization done and get the, the campus cleaned up and ready to accept some customers here in the next day or two. Jim, was it, it was confirmed it was an EF1 there, wasn't it? On campus? Yeah, that's my under, that's my understanding, Paul. Yeah. The Have you put a total damage uh, as, as far as the financial number to that, the monetary damage to some of the buildings done? Sure. I mean, I've I've been around the campus constantly and in my brain spins as I look at each building and think, you know, mm-hmm. best case scenario, worst case scenario. Um, you know, one thing when you are dealing with a, a major claim like this is you don't want to be too specific about what you think the damage is because somebody may come back and yeah. say, well, you know, now you're saying that you have a hundred million dollars in damage and you were on the radio last week saying it was only 20 million. But <laughs> Jim's yeah. opinion is that um, a good estimate I think is around 20 million and damage um, could be a lot more if we have total losses on some buildings. Well, the good news was nobody was hurt, as far as I know, and, and uh, certainly nobody was killed. Were how many people were on campus when this happened? Well, that's the that's the the point to remember, Paul, for sure. That's why we we've had a smile on our face through this cleanup. It's because we did not have any mm-hmm. injuries at all that we're aware of, and I, I really have to. I have to take a step back and say that that's uh, that's all the glory to God because I'm not usually a a weather guy that that you know freaks out when we have a major storm coming. Usually we wait till in you know, the morning of if we have a few hours to make a decision and then we you know we do our alerts then. But uh, God just really nudged me Monday night. I I can't really explain that feeling that came over me. But uh, about eight o'clock that night we said. Let's just send an alert out and say that we're not going to have class after about 1130 tomorrow. And then we went ahead and dismissed all of our employees to go check on their families. And I, I second guessed that decision a little bit. I thought that may have been, a, have been a little too early, a little too aggressive. But I understand now that that was definitely the right call. And yeah. um, we have what we like to refer to as triple redundancy when it comes to alerts. And um, we have a rave alert system that, alerts you if you have anything from an active shooter to a major storm Mm -hmm. coming. So we we can alert our students by email and then a text. And the one thing that I've learned with college students and and hard-headed guys like me sometimes, the most effective thing that we have is this uh, really robust uh, siren system on all of our campuses with these (laughs) huge loudspeakers. And so they'll they'll, they'll catch your attention. They will, and actually, uh, yeah. my kids, my daughter's a freshman, so we were, she was back on campus. A couple of her friends were at the president's home. Our son was back from high school, and um, so we were watching everything. And when that siren went off, and you saw the the, the rotation, and then you heard this booming voice say, "You know, seek shelter immediately. Tornado is imminent." You started, you know, I heard some some guys screaming like girls and, and ducking inside the building so those that were left. And <clears throat> we actually, mm. I got those kids and 
and shoved them up under the crawl space of the president's house because I wasn't taking any chances. I'm glad we did. Well, I'm, I'm glad it turned out uh, as good as it possibly could do. So when will the students be fully back on campus, or is that just going to take a while? Well, I'll give you my best, my best guess as of last evening. Our goal is to bring our employees back this morning at 9 a.m., the ones that haven't been on campus already working. We weren't really sure mm -hmm. if the crews would be out of the way, but they appear to be. Uh, we hope to have in-person classes tomorrow uh, on the Goodman campus. Of course, one good thing about Holmes is that we have three major campuses, really, with a lot of crews, and so this probably only affected 25% of our student population um, because Grenada and Ridgeland are, are fully operational, so we were able to move some resources around that way. But uh, the dorms will be down for another day or two, the ones that weren't you know, damaged beyond repair. And that's the, got it. the question as soon as I get off the phone with you is to uh, go check a couple of those dorms that were really hit hard and see if, if part of those dorms are usable. We're very cognizant of the fact that our students had their vehicles damaged and most of them can't afford the gas prices. So I know that's going to be a, you know, a, a balancing act of kids want to be back and students want to be back in person. Mm -hmm. They deserve to be here in person after all they've been through the last few years. So we want to give them that in-person experience, but we also have to be lenient on the ones that, that lost a vehicle or can't afford to drive back and forth if we can't get their dorm room ready. So we're going to do all we can to put every student in a dorm. And maybe it's a situation kind of like on the airline when we ask somebody to voluntarily give up their seat um, for some type of incentive. If we have to do that, we'll do it. If we have to run our buses to go pick kids up, we will. Baseball continues. Baseball, softball continues. Doing well. Continues. Very good. How many? Uh, Dr. Jim Haffey is uh, my guess. Uh, Jim, how many students do, do we have now total as far as Holmes Community College? Oh, I'd say district wide, we probably have forty five hundred students. Um, mm -hmm. About a third of those are on the main campus. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon that we uh, that our main campus is is not the largest as far as student enrollment, but it's certainly um, the hub of activity because all of your sports dorms, cafeteria, all that is here on the Goodman campus. But we have a, uh, a larger number actually on the Ridgeland campus and then almost that same amount on the Grenada campus. Yeah, that, that Ridgeland facility turned out to be uh, uh, a pretty sweet deal. I mean, as far as uh, growing the, 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 the college, because uh, I, I, I understand it's about maxed out, isn't it? It is, but that that just means that we need to expand and get some more customers. Cause that's <laughs> that's our goal, you know. So anybody's that's, listening that's, wants that's to contribute to, that. Yeah. contribute to that. And, and Paul, I do have to say, we, our response from yeah. our uh, our local delegation uh, of legislators has been phenomenal. Jason White's always a champion for homes, and Josh Harkins, mm -hmm. Senator Michelle, uh, Carl Oliver. You know, he's now he's he's been doing a lot of the load on appropriations, so he's he's been great. And of mm -hmm. course, uh. Lydia Chaz and all, and we've reached out to the governor's office and our our congressman. Well, I'm glad you guys are doing good, and um, uh, and I and I thank you for spending some time. Don't be a stranger. Love to get you back on talk about maybe workforce development and do something like that because Holmes Community College is one of the uh, uh, a, a very very vibrant community college in our state, and we thank you so very much, Jim. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. See you soon. You got it.